From what I feel is one of the most underrated studios in the gaming industry, Arkane Austin, the development team that's worked on Dishonored, and my personal favorite Arkane title, Prey, is coming back again with its newest entry, Redfall. Another highly ambitious title that according to Arkane themselves is their most ambitious game ever. In typical Arkane fashion, Redfall is aiming to shake things up pretty dramatically from past entries. My name is DeMarco, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a survivor's guide to Redfall. There's no one who can help you. I know sickness. I know death. If you would have asked the question, what is Redfall? When the game was first revealed, the common answer would have been probably a Left 4 Dead clone with vampires. In fact, you still might be hearing that around. However, this could not be further from the truth. In fact, Redfall game director Harvey Smith has made it a point to say during interviews that this is not the case. It's actually more similar with a game such as Far Cry. Sure enough, when you take a closer look at everything that Redfall has to offer, this certainly seems to be the case. So then, what exactly is Redfall? Redfall is an open-world, story-driven, co-op, action, first-person shooter with immersive sim and RPG elements playable with up to four people. Quite the mouthful. But it does explain why comparisons have been drawn to other titles such as Borderlands, Dying Light, and the aforementioned Far Cry. However, objectively speaking, to try to label Redfall as a one-to-one -one comparison to any of these titles would be selling Redfall short, as the title brings plenty of its own identity to the table. Again, it's one of those things like if you if you watch just like combat footage, you might look at Left 4 Dead or Back 4 Blood or, or any of these things to go, oh, I see multiple characters facing a bunch of enemies and like so it's the same game. But I think <laughs> that's that would be doing a disservice, that it's all of the things that take place in between the combat as well as the combat itself. Oh, here's just some stuff that you can go off into this amazing sort of dynamic, ever-changing world and sort of experience and explore for yourself. And you come back the next day and it'll look and feel like a different experience, even though you're in the exact same part of the game. I mean, I think those are the kinds of things that Arcane does that really um, bring that sort of extra special element that makes their game so cool. Redfall has a unique opportunity to be one of the strongest arcane releases if it's able to combine the storytelling of games like Prey with the level design of titles such as Dishonored. Within the island town of Redfall, Massachusetts, vampires have eclipsed the sun and taken control of the island. It's up to you to take it back. Like past arcane titles, you'll still have the ability to choose a more stealthy approach or can choose to go in loud and proud, and from the start of the game, you have the option of choosing one of four unique heroes, each with their own unique abilities, whom we'll take a closer look at later. Redfall is set to release on May 2nd and is exclusive to the Xbox Series X, Series S, and PC, and will release day one on Xbox Game Pass. Redfall takes place in the fictional town of Redfall, Massachusetts. Formerly a town of quaint streets, breezy boardwalks, and charming neighborhoods that has since been taken over by a vampiric threat, who have eclipsed the sun and turned most of the island's population into minions, the rest as cattle to feed on. There are small pockets of survivors, some of which you will find yourself rescuing throughout Redfall's story. Redfall, Massachusetts is the biggest game world that Arcane has ever made. Game director Harvey Smith has explained previously that Talos 1, from their previous title Prey, was about five football fields in size. According to Harvey, Redfall, with its true open world structure, is quote, hold my beer on that one. I remember early on there was a moment we were working on District 2, which is a little more rural, and uh, Jim McGill took... Talos at scale and <laughs> dropped it in the middle of the farm that's there 
and the district just eats the whole space station. Of course, it's gigantic. It was just the size of the actual like farm oh, area. Yeah. And that's just like one mission. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Vehicles will not be part of the game, and the town of Redfall was designed to be explorable entirely on foot. For many, boasting about map size doesn't mean much if the world itself ends up being mostly hollow. However, creative director Ricardo Bear makes it a point to state. If I could put it into one word, it would probably be like uh, transported. Like we put so much effort into the narrative, into the world building, environmental storytelling, all that stuff that I, and it's part of the reason the games that I gravitate towards make me feel that way, you know? Uh, so I hope players feel like they've been transported to some place that like feels real at the end of the day. The map is divided into two distinct districts. District 1 is the more urban and town-like environments where the first half of the missions will take place. District 2 is a much more rural area featuring farms, churches, and more. Both districts allow for the development team to gate players in order to not make the game too open, a concern that was held and addressed at one point during the title's development. Instead, breaking the game up into two distinct districts helps give the town of Redfall a more diverse set of locations while also making exploration more manageable and more fun. Unlike past arcane games where decision did play a role, Redfall is much more linear in its nature. You won't be making choices and you won't find yourself with some kind of chaos system like you did in the Dishonored series. Redfall is much more oriented in the way that Deathloop was in this regard, so that way you can choose to focus solely on the action experience without having to think about the consequences of performing certain actions. Outside of the environmental storytelling, which we'll go into more detail later, survivals of Redfall will find dynamic weather systems, such as a fog that can change how you proceed through the environments, a full day-night cycle that shakes things up in order to keep you on your toes as you explore the town, alone or with friends. Impressively, despite being the largest Arcane title when it comes to map size, according to Ricardo Bear, the creative director at Arcane Austin, every inch of the open world has been handcrafted to provide a plethora of environmental factors for players to discover, keeping the world rich and interesting, filled with content and lore to find. But Redfall's most dominant feature are, without a doubt, the vampires. We will talk about the specifics of each of the types we know about so far, but these vampires are not like traditional ones from film and TV, although they do share some similarities. The story of Redfall begins with biotech startups, such as a company called Avum Laboratories, moving into the town of Redfall and beginning researching on life extension and longevity experiments. Promotional materials have been revealed through concept art, talking about Avum promotional signups for medical trials, with posters reading things such as, sign up for medical trials today and be the hero you've always wanted to be. Our innovations have reimagined the landscape of biological research on an unprecedented level. We don't know the fate of Avum in the modern day, the time in which Redfall takes place, but no doubt the players will be able to explore and learn more about this mysterious company and their experiments as you experience the main story in Redfall. However, the vampires in the world of Redfall don't have a disease and cannot be cured. These vampires are people who wanted to live forever, well knowing of the consequences, whether that would be the aversion from the sun or the requirement of blood for sustenance. The allure of the power that came with vampirism was worth the cost. So while there are no non-lethal options in Redfall like past arcane games, you shouldn't feel too bad when you stake a vampire through their metaphorical lack of a heart. There are four characters available to play as in Redfall. They consist of Jacob Boyer, Devinder Crossley, Layla Ellison, and Remy De La Rosa. Each of them are unique in both personality and playstyle, offering different abilities that are tied to their origins and backgrounds. Let's begin with Jacob, an ex-military sharpshooter sent into Redfall just before the sun darkened as part of an elite private security force. Dark circumstances separated him from his platoon, and he ended up in an encounter with one of the vampire gods, resulting in supernatural abilities, including a ghostly raven that can scout out enemies for him. Jacob's three main abilities include his raven, a cloak ability, and heart stopper, which presumably may provide a supernatural level of precision. 
Devinder Krausley is a cryptozoologist and aspiring inventor. His recent book tour landed him in Redfall just before it went dark. After years of struggling to create cutting-edge tech to hunt the supernatural phenomena, everything is finally starting to click. In the trailers, we see Devinder using his dark light ability to stun wide groups of enemies, an arc javelin, and the ability to teleport short distances. Layla Ellison moved to Redfall from Wisconsin. She studied biomedical engineering at Redfall Technical University and volunteered for a medical trial at the ominous Avum Therapeutics research facility, where apparently something had gone very wrong, leaving her with intense telekinetic abilities. She has some of the magical purple abilities that we've seen in various trailers, including the ability to create a telekinetic lift to provide aerial advantage, her mystical umbrella that blocks weapon fire and can project that back onto enemies, and one labeled Vampire X boyfriend presumably some form of telekinetic ally to help on the battlefield and lastly there's remy de la rosa a combat engineer sent to redfall to train coast guard personnel on the island she's lived her life on the front lines of conflict to help those in need around the world as part of an elite navy rescue unit with the help of her robot cohort brabon she's determined to rescue redfall survivors and eliminate any enemies that will stand in her way Remy's abilities include a fast revive, a distraction using her robot, and C4 charges. The developers at Arcane have specified that you can build out these characters any way that you want, unlocking relevant upgrades to your playstyle. So just because Jacob looks like he should be hanging in the back and sniping from the rooftops, he can still get up in enemies' faces as much as anyone else. Redfall features an entire ecology of vampires, with a structured hierarchy among them featuring varying levels of powers, abilities, and appearances. At the bottom of the totem pole are normal humans, the cultists, who worship the vampires and aspire to become one of them. Although powerless, in numbers they can provide a devastating challenge by overwhelming our heroes. If they are lucky, one of these stronger vampires might share their blood with them and allow the cultists to transform. However, once again, according to Ricardo Bear, it is up to the vampire as to how powerful they decide to make their new thrall. While a cultist might hope to become the most badass vampire with all sorts of cool and unique powers, it's possible they may turn into one of the lesser creatures, such as familiars or even blood bags, which is described as the vampire equivalent of a milking cow. A blood bag's purpose is simply to allow vampires to feed when they need it, but they will defend themselves if required. Just don't be too close when they pop. There are several stronger types of vampires that players can come across, including specialized versions such as the Angler. This vampire uses a psychic harpoon in order to pull away prey and isolate them. Another vampire to watch out for is known as the Shroud, who is able to block out an entire area in darkness and can phase through the floor temporarily to move short distances and avoid damage and ambush prey. One last one is known as the Rook. When and how the vampire gods summon this formidable foe is unknown, but by disrupting their plans, you're more likely to come across him several times as you fight back against the vampires. Some of these will be vampire underbosses, tougher enemies with their own unique abilities such as shielding themselves from damage. Killing one of these elite vampires will grant you a key that is needed in order to face the ultimate threat to the island of Redfall. At the top of the totem, are the vampire gods, boss level vampires which are among the most powerful that you will face in the game. These vampires are the ones that are not only the most wicked of them all, but are also responsible for keeping you trapped on the island of Redfall. Arcane is a studio that likes to really shake up the formula and try to invent something new each time that still has roots in what the studio is known for, which is its immersive sim elements. For hardcore fans of the Dishonored series, this might come as a bit of a disappointment, but for others, it's a positive signal that Arcane is willing to innovate and change in order to keep things fresh rather than trying to relive past successes into the ground.
Redfall is now shifting its attention off of purely single player experiences to a now co-op title that has a linear story. For fans of single player experiences, Harvey Smith has cited multiple times that not only can you play the game solo, but there was a large emphasis placed on the single player experience during development. It's been stated that playing Redfall solo makes the experience much more like a traditional arcane game. It is worth mentioning, however, that there are plenty of titles historically that are built around the co-op aspect of the game, which, even though playing solo is a viable style, it's clearly better suited as an experience with friends. Redfall is complete with main and side quests. We do not know much about the main quest in Redfall, only that it will involve you taking back the island from the vampire threat and taking on the legendary vampire gods. Certain quests will have you helping out some of the survivors on the island going on missions to perform tasks, such as restarting a lighthouse that the vampires have turned off in order to warn others about the island's condition. Other times, you may stumble across world events, such as a group of survivors held captive by the vampires who plan to use them as sacrifices. You have the opportunity to save them for some rewards. There's multiple safe houses that can be found across the island, no doubt where some folks will get the Far Cry comparisons. You can choose to go and clear these safe houses, and you will find that piece by piece, you're able to take the island back from the vampiric threat. But first, you have to make sure that the area is made secure. As you take back the island piece by piece, beware of angering the vampire gods who might send in the Rook in order to stop you from getting in the way of their plans. Along with the main story, there's also procedurally created locations in the game called Remnant Nests. These are optional, procedurally created dungeons that can be replayed multiple times for extra loot. Each time that you visit, the nest will be laid out differently, allowing for an endlessly replayable experience. Players will have to fight their way into the heart of the nest and destroy it in order to complete the dungeon. But the vampires are not going to be letting it go without a fight. <laughs> Once you're able to destroy the heart, it's time to run as the remnant nest will collapse upon itself and possibly trap you inside if you can't get out quick enough. Weapons in Redfall is one of the larger points in the game because of the fact that it does have looter shooter elements. From the way developers have talked about it, there's an endless amount of possible combinations that can be found within Redfall. In the trailers, we've seen your typical standard array of weapons from handguns to sniper rifles, assault rifles to shotguns. It's all here for players to experiment with. Some of the weapons you'll find on Redfall will be literally cobbled together with what ever the remaining citizens of the island had around. Think mom and pop's old family hunting rifle. These coupled together weapons will be what players likely find in the early game, falling into one of the previously mentioned categories. From there, as you level up, it's been mentioned how later weapons you could find will start to notice a distinctly more militaristic edge to them. During an interview with game director Harvey Smith, it was mentioned how a lot of the weapons that can be found in the game are tied to environmental storytelling and are appropriate based on where they are found. Needless to say, there's going to be plenty of weapon styles in between as well to keep things interesting and fresh. Throughout the recent gameplay deep dive, we've seen a variety of different weapon skins that are used as well as attachments and combinations that can be found within the game world, making every single weapon feel unique and special. According to the studio, weapons will come in unique varieties with random weapon traits, offering a virtually endless number of weapon combinations might sound awfully familiar to those who've played Borderlands. You can also customize your weapons with items such as a stake that you could put to the end of some of them, offering a higher level of customizability. Still, it might be possible that you run into a situation where you're carrying a handful of assault rifles that all look exactly the same, but RNG has made it so one deals more damage, but fires slower, for example. Like similar games in this category, weapons do fall into a level of rarity with your typical gold for epic Epic, green for uncommon, blue for rare, so on and so forth. There are additional unique weapons that can be found in Redfall that are particularly well suited to taking down the vampire.
higher threat. This includes a unique stake launcher weapon, as well as a UV light and others that are waiting for players to discover. In addition to the weapons that can be found in Redfall's world, there are also pieces of gear known as grave locks and remnants. Remnants, lore-wise, are objects that were carried by the individuals while they ascended to become a vampire. These objects now have magical qualities about them and can be wielded by the player to change things like how weapons work, how powers work, provide defense or health bonuses, and more. They're somewhat similar to the bone charms that can be found in Dishonored. There's also the grave locks, which we know much less about, but they are inherently tied to specific characters and there's a finite number of them where that can be found within the world. These objects are seemingly more personal to the characters that you can play as and reveal narrative elements about them. When it comes to outfit customization, there's tons of different outfits that can be found in the game to let you stand out visually if you're playing with friends. We've already seen some cosmetics used as pre-order bonuses for the Bite Back Edition. <laughs> Multiplayer in Redfall is an optional element, however as previously mentioned, even playing solo at the time of making this video, an online connection is always required even in the single player mode. Redfall can be experienced with up to three other players and the more players that you add in, the more of an arcade like experience you'll have, as most likely situations will be tackled through aggressive gunplay rather than stealth. However, you also get some unique perspectives into the characters that you play as during a multiplayer session. Depending on the characters present when you play, they will have unique dialogue and banter between one another that adds to the world and each other. Play with different characters and you'll get to hear different dialogue, helping to make playthroughs feel unique. You can, however, play with four of the same character within a single party. Arcane and the Redfall team has defined the making of this game to allow the player to choose how they want to experience it. So if everybody wants to play as Devinder, you can do that. The leveling system and how you specialize your character will allow you each to feel different from one another and take on different roles, albeit having the same major abilities. If you choose to play solo, you will not be joined by bots or AI. You'll be experiencing the game exclusively solo, which will feel much more like a traditional experience from Arcane, according to the team. However, if you do choose to go in with friends, there's a couple things you might want to know beforehand. This comes in the form of how progression is handled and how difficulty is handled. Harvey Smith has stated that the more players you add, the more the difficulty increases, which is typical for comparative co-op titles such as Borderlands. For this reason, it's encouraged that you generally stay together when exploring the island. During an IGN interview between Miranda Sanchez and game director Harvey Smith, it was revealed that traveling far away from your party may include some type of tethering system that brings you back to the group, although the distance would be pretty generous. It is possible, however, that this will change during the course of development for fine tuning and polishing before the game releases. The development team has tested various versions, one in which you could walk all the way to the opposite side of the map on your own, but we're unsure of the final decision as of yet. Another important aspect when it comes to difficulty is the level of the characters that you can bring into a friend's game. Unlike titles such as Fallout 76 where the game balances itself out so that enemies scale no matter what level you are and who you're playing with, but Redfall's difficulty of enemies scales to the level of the host player. The example that's been provided is if you can bring a level 3 character into a level 40 game, the level 3 character is going to die. A lot. Or at least rely on the level 40 character in order to help them up frequently. However, because of this increased difficulty, the level 3 character will be able to level up faster, boosting them through progression. This works the other way as well, where a level 40 character can join a level 3's game, but will be able to insta-kill most enemies. The idea was that Arcane wanted to put control in the hands of players to allow you to decide how you wanted to play. For the optimal experience, however, it's suggested that you might want to keep the same level, generally speaking, as the companions or as your friends that you're playing with. As far as progression, 
Arcane's multiplayer progression system is broken down into story progression and character progression. Character progression, such as equipment and levels, will carry over from a multiplayer session to a single player session. However, story progression is only provided to the host. In other words, if you and I were playing Redfall together and I was the host, and together we completed mission 7 in the game, if you returned and played solo, or if you decided to host a multiplayer game yourself, you would not have mission 7 completed. Loot in the game is also not individualized, meaning you will need to find your own stuff. If you play with a loot hoarder, best of luck to you. It's also important to note that once you pick any given character, you are bound to that character the entire playthrough. Picking a new character will require you to start a new campaign. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into our survivor's guide of everything we know so far about Redfall. If you're interested in the game, there's plenty of footage that is available both in this video that I've been showcasing here as well as on the official Redfall social media pages. Be sure to check those out and show the developers your support for the game. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I hope to see you all on the island of Redfall.